Hi all, Camry Boy here. As promised, the first in a series of videos that are hopefully going to help a few people who are thinking of starting a wood turning make the right decision on what to buy and which way to go. A lot of research was done on the internet and an awful lot of watching YouTube uploads from people with a lot of experience which helped me make uh, a more informed decision. I will forewarn you that whatever decision you make in the beginning, six months, nine months, a year down the road, you'll think, mm, I should have gone that way. Well, that is something that you just can't foresee because it is a, an, an ever-growing experience and your knowledge, you're forever learning new, new things, whether it be through personal experience or watching the experience of others. So there has to come a point where you make the plunge. Well, I plunged in with this, which is the AWVSL 1000. Uh, it's a 750 watt motor. Um, it comes in at about four foot high from the base of the legs to the top of the headstock. It's 18 inches deep, approximately, that way. And it comes in about five foot three long and it weighs 92 kilos. So you will need a hand when it's delivered to put it into situ because it is rather heavy for one person to move around. It comes on a pallet. The bedway and the headstock are already attached together and then the other accessories are in a separate bit of the packing. The heavy bit obviously is the bedway and the headstock. It comes with a, um, a base unit, four legs and a shelf to give it a bit more rigidity and then they are bolted to the bedway. This particular lathe I had to raise about four inches because I'm nearly six foot two and well I was six foot two but I've shrunk a little bit with age so I'm about six foot one and a half now let's say. Um, the optimum height they say for the spindle is at your elbow when you're standing and your elbow is, is in that position because that is the most comfortable position to do your wood turning. Less stress on your back etc etc. So I raised it and it's fixed to the floor, bolted to the floor. Um, it's sturdy, not too bad at all, bearing in mind it is not a heavy duty lathe. The speed range is 500 RPM to, 200 R uh, to 2000 RPM. Speed is dialed in with this lever, move the lever and the speed changes by a system of a, um, a pulley at the back on the motor which is shaped like so, like a cone shape and as you move the lever the cones on the pulley move in and out. The belt sits in the V and goes onto a pulley on the spindle and by means of that happening as the pulley is raised or lowered so the speed alters. The big fault with that is that there's an awful lot of pressure on the belt and in fact Six months after I had it, the, doing my, week, my, my monthly clear out of the headstock, blowing out the air and checking everything and oiling things, etc, etc, uh, the belt had frayed. It hadn't broken, but it was starting to fray. So I got a new belt from Axminster FOC because it was still under warranty. Um, easy to fit the belt. If you have to purchase a belt later, it's only about £4. So they're not expensive and it's not a big job. But it's something to bear in mind if the lathe you're thinking of buying has that method of speed change that you will have to change your belt a little more often than you would had it not that system. The more expensive lathes have, um, I think it's called a brush motor system, where the, the belt is actually on a single pulley and then you have a knob on the front which electronically dulls in the speed. And then if you want another range of speeds, you flip the lid by the means of a lever, slacken off the pulley, move the belt to the next ratio, and then you get another range of speeds on that belt, on that pulley, sorry. So the belt is doing all it should do, turning pulleys. It's not being squeezed and moved up and down. So that, that is something to consider when you are looking to buy a lathe. Having said that, it, it has done me proud and it will do me for quite a long time yet. What comes when you buy it, the basic items that come with it are tool rest banjo, which is this little chappy here, 
a 300mm tool press. Obviously, your tail stock, which you can't really see in there, but I'll bring it up there. Look, the tail stock. And the accessories that come with it as a basic starter is the revolving centre for the tail stock and the two Morse tapered centre for there so you can do your centre turning out of the box as it were and also a face plate and a face plate is for your face plate work turning where that screws on to the spindle on the headstock and you attach your workpiece to there by the method of screws and if you want a small workpiece and you can't screw it down because the screws have a certain radius and that is as small as you can get what I did was to turn a circular piece of wood screw that to the to the face plate and then you can use hot glue to stick your blank to start turning I mean I don't use that anymore because since I've purchased a chuck however the other facility is that the headstock is not fixed by means of the lever you can move the headstock up and down the bedway to your desired position another feature is you can turn the headstock you can rotate it <clears throat> so you can actually have a more comfortable position for doing certain types of work where you're not actually leaning over the bedway um, it does have an advantage for that. I very rarely use it, but nevertheless the facility is there should you. And you could actually turn it through 180 degrees and turn off the back of the bed if you want to turn larger bowls. You can turn 14 inches diameter bowl over the bed, and I haven't had any necessity to turn anything larger than that. But if you do, you can do it. To provide you with a tool rest, when you turn it round, you have an arm extension which simply slots into the banjo and then your tool rest goes in there. So that gives you that extra radius. I did find when I started doing it that the motor gets in the way, but that's quite simply solved by taking the banjo off and fixing it there. So then you've got much more radius around there to work on your work. As I say, it's not a problem with me because I don't use it. But um, again, there are schools of thought that say if the headstock is movable, it's another moving point that can wear, which is true because it's obviously on a, on a pin, um, and it lacks rigidity. A, a, a solid head doesn't move is normally made out of solid cast iron it doesn't move so it's attached to the it is attached to the machine and it's more stable I haven't had a problem with this but then again I'm not a professional turner so <coughs> that's a few feet a few features which are available which I very rarely use and here obviously is your safety button for on and off the speed range is between 500 and 2000 RPM, as I said. Now, there are certain types of turning, like pens, for example, where I've found, when watching YouTube, that people need much higher speeds for doing pens successfully because it's a much smaller item and you get a better finish straight off the tool, less sanding is required, etc. So you need those extra RPM. And some of the machines go up sort of 3,000, 3,500, and some even 4,200 revs per minute, uh, which is fine. But I don't do pen turning, so that's not an issue for me. 2,000 revs I very, very rarely use. I'm normally turning around sort of 15, 1,800 revs on spindle stuff. And when you're turning bowls, it's a lot slower than that. Uh, but you can go into that, or you can find out the information on YouTube from many, many people who've got far more experience than I have. So basically, its, it's, it's, it's speed range is not an issue for me. I turn mainly, I turn bowls within, within that 14 inch diameter. 
The spindle work involved for me is purely things like fruit and, and small boxes, hollow forms, etc. The usual things that you do on a spindle at this end of the lathe. And that brings me to say that I personally would not have bought such a, a long lathe. Didn't need it. My work is here. I've very rarely got that end. Uh, well, if ever, to work, because I don't need the length. If you're doing chair legs, table legs, uh, slant standards, etc., then yes, you need that extra length. But if you purchase a midi lathe, the majority of them have the option of buying an extension to the bed. So if you do need, on the odd occasion, to turn long stuff, then you merely attach the extension, which means that your tailstock can travel further, and then when you finish doing what you need, what you need that extra length for, you can put it away again. You can take the extension off, which gives you more room for storage, whatever. So, in hindsight, I would have gone for a midi lathe uh, with that flexibility of having it longer should I need it. Um, the other thing to consider is that for a few more pounds, a smaller lathe, you're going to get a better quality lathe. Um, again, all these things you have to weigh up before you make that purchase and jump in, as it were. Because once you've done it, you're not stuck with it, but once you've done it, unless you want to spend out more money, then you're, you're going to lose out on what you could have had. So research, research, research before you make that final decision. And that is basically what you get with the lathe. You get a spanner, you, you get um, a few Allen keys, etc, etc. But that's the basic setup for when you start your, your wood turning. And from then on it gets interesting. But you can actually turn from day one providing you've got the tools and a bit of wood. Um, another thing, which is what I was, I was actually going to cover it on another video, but a set of tools to begin with. A lot of people say you shouldn't have a set of tools. Well, if you've never done something before, a set of tools are relatively inexpensive. They won't be the best, we can buy better quality ones, but if you get a, a 60 quid, 70 quid, will buy you a basic set of tools which are more than adequate for you to start off with. Uh, get you a feel for what you're doing, see if you like it, because there's no point, no point spending £200 on a set of tools, which is nearly the price of the lathe at this, at this level, and then deciding you don't want to do it anymore. Um, but it will then ease you in gently, and then you'll very soon find the tools you need more of, and less of, and ones you don't use, uh, for the particular type of turning you're going to do. So that is very important. Things like sharpening, tool selection, dust extraction, all the things that are very important, safety with regards to the type of visors you should wear, dust masks, etc, etc, will come in later videos because otherwise it gets too boring and too long. So that's your lathe. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please post your comments, even if they're derogatory. I don't mind the complaints and the and the negatives because that all helps me to learn and hopefully to give a better quality video on my next attempt. Well thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheerio!